So very good evening uh, to all uh, dear brothers uh, in Christ. So we thank our uh, Heavenly Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for giving this uh, wonderful opportunity to discuss uh, his wonderful words of life, uh, especially to study his uh, uh, books, uh, volumes, uh, which have been written by Chosen Angel, uh, the Seventh Angel. So last week, uh, we have been studying about uh, sundry earthly obligations of the new creation. Chapter uh, 14, we studied uh, uh, till page number um, 564, I believe. Correct? 565, we ended. Uh, first paragraph. Correct, now, brother? Yes, brother, yes. Okay. So, this week, uh, we'll uh, start from uh, page number 565, uh, para 2, in proportion. So, we'll start from there. Uh, okay, initially, I request uh, Sister Munna to read. Munna, Sister, is it possible for you to read? Okay, brother. Yeah. In proportion, as the means at our disposal are limited, all expenditures will be curtailed and brown, not only down to the income, but a little less so that no matter how little we earn, a certain proportion may be laid aside, either for our own future necessities or as a thank offering to the Lord, or as the apostle suggested that we might have to give to those who are in still more needy circumstances. Let it be remembered always that Trust in the Lord implies contentment, and that this means restfulness of heart. Under this condition, bread and water, or potatoes and salt, will taste better and yield better results than far richer food partaken of in a different spirit. Trust will always imply thankfulness too, and hence. The child of God living on, on the plainest of fears will continually overflow with gratitude to the giver of all good with full reliance in his wisdom in all the affairs of life. This will not mean indifference to progress if the door to that progress and greater prosperity were Yes, the door to the door and honorable mean of bettering our condition. Finding such a door before us, we should thankfully accept it as being of divine providence and as possibly leading on to still further lesson from our great teacher. <clears throat> Thank you, sister. Uh... Dear brethren, so last few weeks uh, we have been studying about uh, sundry earthly obligations. So we have studied how uh, the Bible scriptures tells that we should provide uh, things uh, honest in the sight of all men. And uh, we have studied in the first part uh, what is the reason that why should we uh, follow this scripture? Uh, because uh, uh, the whole world is uh, under, uh, you see, a certain uh, under nature of law. So, uh, under that nature of law, you see, everybody is supposed to be uh, within their limits. And uh, as new creature, we got uh, greater responsibility. And uh, especially, we are under uh, divine law and that uh, we should owe no man anything except love. So, we have greater responsibility than all the, uh, you see, people around this world. So, uh, the one thing, uh, you see, that... Uh, you see, has to be uh, kept in mind is that uh, it is uh, we need to uh, consider as new creatures. Uh, you see that we need to grow into the likeness of Christ. So all the characters uh, of God, uh, especially the four characters of uh, uh, power, uh, justice, love, wisdom. So all these things uh, has to be you see uh, taken care, and all these things has to be uh, you see practically implemented in our life. Therefore, dear brethren, so it is uh, as new creatures, we have got uh, a greater responsibility, you see, in the whole world uh, than the, 
uh, other people of this world. So, uh, and last week, what we should is that uh, we should is that we should live within our means. So, uh, and this week, uh, uh, in this paragraph, uh, our brother uh, not only advises uh, that uh, we should uh, uh, maintain our expenditure as much uh, as little as possible. You see. Uh, and we to we need to try to live uh, uh, you see according to our income or a uh, uh, little bit uh, uh, within our income so that is a very very important point because uh, uh, we can do a little bit of savings so that uh, we can serve the lord better in the coming days so the primary thing is that uh, we should try to maintain our expenses within our income so generally you see the trend or uh, you see uh, the fashion uh, in this world is that uh, they try to live uh, fashionably or uh, what do you say grandly uh, among the society that's the trend in this world therefore you can see that the bank people are offering a lot of loans very attractive loans uh, with uh, easy emi payable so this seems to be very comfortable to the people to take loans and uh, you see uh, go for purchase of uh, things which are uh, which they feel that uh, which that is reasonable in the society so what happens uh, you see dear brethren is that uh, uh, that actually you see uh, makes our commitment uh, uh, more in the world and we try to live above our income but uh, the scripture says that uh, we should try to live within our income whatever is possible from us you see uh, in that one only, we should be satisfied. Uh, let us read on scripture, 1 Timothy 6.18. 1 Timothy uh, 6.18. Can somebody read 1 Timothy 6.18, uh, if you don't mind? Brothers, you are there in line? Yes, brother. Please wait. First Timothy uh, six, chapter verse eighteen. Hmm. Uh, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, re uh, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Very good. So ready to distribute and willing to communicate. So they that are rich, of course, uh, uh, we are not so rich enough. Uh, you see uh, to. You see, uh, take care of everything. But at least uh, God has blessed uh, us richly in his grace, in his mercy. So whatever is possible from us, even little bit, uh, you see, we need to keep it aside uh, for the Lord's work. Uh, why? why? Why that is important? Uh, you see, that is one of the way that we show gratitude to the Lord's, uh, you see, uh, mercy and grace uh, upon us. It is like a thanks offering which we keep for the Lord. See, among Bible students, we usually don't take, uh, we do usually don't collect offerings. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we should not develop this character of giving uh, to the Lord. Uh, you see, the giving to the Lord, uh, you see, it's a very blessing thing. Uh, because uh, the Bible says that, uh, uh, you see, uh, whatever you give to the Lord, you see, it will never go empty-handed. So, the Lord will definitely, abundantly bless us in either of the ways. So similarly, the God's children should be a cheerful giver. You see, uh, let us read one incident that is mentioned to us in uh, 2 Corinthians 9 chapter. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9 chapter. Uh, can you read verses 1, 2 and 3? For as touching the ministering to uh, Second Corinthians, right, brother? Correct. Second Corinthians nine. You're reading correctly. Read. Yeah. For as touching the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you, for I know the forwardness of your mind, for which I boast of you to them of Macedonia, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal hath provoked very many. Yet have I sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this behalf, that, as I said, 
you may be ready. Yes, you may be ready. ready. You see, uh, and uh, he also says verse 6 and 7, brother. Huh? But this I say, he which soweth sp sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Even man according mm -hmm. Please, please, please. As he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not uh, grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Very good. So God loveth a cheerful giver. See, Apostle Paul gives an example of a Macedonia church. The Macedonia church was a very poor church. But yet, uh, you see, in all their blessings, uh, they contributed a little bit of things and uh, you see, and uh, d dedicated that thing happily and cheerfully for the Lord's work. Uh, you see, that's what Apostle Paul says that, uh, you see, if anybody is sowing, you see, sparingly, he shall reap uh, sparingly. If you sow bountifully, that means cheerfully, abundantly, whatever is possible, let it be a one rupee or one dollar, you see, if we give it completely with our heart, that has got abundant of blessings. You see, so uh, in the same way, you see, this volume, uh, Brother Russell says that uh, you should lay aside little bit of our portion, you see, for our Lord's, uh, you see, this one as a thank offering, uh, you see. So it is, uh, it might be useful not only for our own purpose, uh, but also useful for the brethren, you see, who are in the Lord. You see, dear brethren, you know very well that uh, uh, we have been supported by so many brethren in the world. But uh, in fact, if you see, almost all the brethren who are in the world are uh, nearly now uh, of aged. You see, they don't have a regular income. You see, they don't have any, uh, what do you say, good businesses or establishments. They're not in work. They're all retired. You see, they're almost nearly 60, 70, 80 years old. How do they contribute on? You see, whatever little bit of income they get, whatever savings they have, you see, some people, uh, they contribute uh, $5, $10. So, all those amounts are uh, into the Lord's uh, you see, activity. So, similarly, we should also implement in our life. Uh, you see, so, uh, the how do we uh, cope with this one? You see, uh, if our condition is critical, and uh, we are not well enough, we are not able to save even a little bit of amount. But uh, at least in that condition, you see, we should try to live within our means. That shows contentment. Contentment means what? Satisfaction. Let it be whatever the condition, you see, it sh it, we should try to live within that uh, satisfaction limit. Uh, here, our brother Russell gives a beautiful example. If our condition permits us to buy bread and water, you see, let us be satisfied in that one. If God doesn't give us uh, potatoes or salt, uh, you see, so we should be satisfied with that condition. To whatever little bit uh, Lord has blessed, uh, you see, we should be, you see, happy in that condition. Probably God's will, he may improve it uh, in the coming days. Uh, until such time, whatever be the condition, you see, we should be really satisfied in that one. Uh, and uh, uh, dear brethren, it's always uh, better that we partake of the Lord's uh, blessings in a proper spirit uh, instead of with a grumbling or a grudging spirit. Uh, oh, this is not okay. This is not okay. This is all uh, this one. Instead of that one, whatever the little bit of things is there, in that only the Lord's uh, people has to be really you see, satisfied. Therefore, we see in the Bible that uh, there is nobody who is uh, uh, grumbled uh, for uh, food uh, in the Bible. You see, uh, an Apostle Paul and even our Lord Jesus Christ also tells that uh, one of the, you see, uh, signs of the Lord's second coming that uh, people will be, uh, you see, completely in drunken mood. They will be completely glutonious, completely quenching their appetites. So, let us lay aside all these things and all and uh, lift up our heads uh, for a redemption draught nine in the book of Luke. It tells, uh, therefore, dear brethren, you see, this... Uh, living within our limits actually shows our thankfulness to the Lord, you see, and our dependence and gratitude upon the Lord that uh, we are completely relied upon His wisdom. 
so whatever is he thinks best in our life uh, that is uh, really acceptable so as the uh, door of opportunity opens uh, so we should uh, use the door of opportunity for improvement uh, so that door of opportunity should also be a writer's means uh, you see that means uh, you see the writer's means uh, that means if we get any opportunity for promotion or a bigger job where we can earn more the lord's brethren has to utilize it uh, you see but uh, that door of opportunity is to be a reasonable one and the writer's one that means the job which we are uh, uh, going that should not be a job where uh, a fraud is happening where uh, underwriters uh, work is happening where wrong things are happening and they are gaining uh, the income and from that one we are getting the salary so it should not be a such type of a job it should be a, a job which uh, really is uh, as much as possible it's not a, a job which does uh, injustice so divine providence will be in such that uh, definitely god uh, will definitely open a door of opportunity and in fact if you see the many of the brethren uh, who are in uh, jobs uh, really if you see they're not even worthy for the jobs uh, but it's only because of god's grace and his mercy that uh, they have been given that uh, opportunity uh, to maintain their lovely lively bread that's also god's grace see in the bible we know about joseph joseph uh, was non, not even worthy of anything he was born he was brought as a slave sold as a slave in egypt but when he was sold uh, to potiphar's uh, house he was a slave uh, but uh, his master uh, saw his uh, you see talent uh, dear brethren and uh, he began to you see what uh, is that uh, he began to you see do it uh, for the lord's uh, sake uh, you see uh, and what happened was that uh, you see lord opened the door where he was lifted above all his servants and that was the righteous door there was no injustice done but even in that one you see potiphar's wife tried to pull him you see but joseph did not give his heart or intention to those activities so that was the righteous door which lord opened you see and joseph utilized it for the benefit so to may serve the lord better you see that is trials may decrease but when he did not give his heart for the unrightful unrightful things that were happening you see he again had to suffer but he let the lord do his way but again god blessed him in a better way he was put into the jail even there you see the jailer identified his good spirit and he was made as in charge of the jail and later on you see he was completely uh, you see promoted to such a position that he was a, a second uh, above the you see pharaoh in egypt so whatever be our means we should try to leave it definitely god will elevate god children in due time like for example we can take the example of daniel also daniel and his friends they were taken to captivity to babylon even as they were you see kids you see almost a teenage kids and all but uh, the king identified uh, you see the excellent spirit uh, in these uh, uh, jewish people and they were well trained and uh, they were given the king's meal but we see in the bible in daniel first chapter that uh, these uh, children never ate the food of the babylonians so a door was open you see they were they were taken captivity you see they were provided limitations they did not have so much of liberty as was there in israel they were kids you see so expect them to be in an enemy's land you see and they behaved wisely you see so whatever means was there they tried to leave it in that win you see but god did not forsake them you see there was a strict order that they should eat the meal of the king so that when the king examines them they might uh, be excellent but uh, you see that was the unrighteous door because the babylonians ate the things which are forbidden in the law the unclean animals these were totally not to be ate at all but at uh, this uh, you see uh, jewish people they stood for the lord uh, let us see what was their reply uh, daniel first chapter <clears throat> daniel first chapter fourth verse can somebody read daniel 
children in whom was no blemish but well favor and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the children. See, what type of children were selected by the king to serve in the king's palace where they were well-favored, skillful, wisdom, cunning, knowledge, understanding, science, ability to stand in the king's palace. So these were the characters that were sought, uh, you see, among these people. So Daniel and his friends had this beautiful, uh, you see, uh, characters and qualities. But yet, uh, you see, they were in the enemy's land. They were uh, suppressed. You see, they were under trial. You see, they were uh, uh, under persecution. They did not have complete liberty which they had in Israel. Lot of restrictions were there. But uh, you see, whatever the Lord permitted, uh, they, you see, they uh, sweetly and quietly bore everything, you see. Then what happened? You see, they were supposed to eat the king's meat. You see, uh, read verse 5, brother. Uh. And the king appointed them a, them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nursing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. You see, so they were supposed to eat the king's meat for how many years? Uh, for three years, it seems, so that after three years, they must stand before the king. But uh, they knew in the law that this was not a reasonable thing. So Daniel and his friends, uh, they purposed in their heart that they would not defile themselves, uh, you see, nor with the king's meat, nor with the drink. So they expressed this one to the Enoch, you see, Enoch there. What happened? Read verse 8 and 9, brother. Huh? But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the person of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, therefore he requested of the prince of the Enos that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the Enos. See, so they purposed in their heart not to defile themselves. But read the next verse. See, it was in their heart they took the decision. Definitely God, Daniel and his friends should have prayed to the Lord. See the reply of God in verse 9. It says, God had brought Daniel in the favor and tender love with the prince of Enos. The same condition as Joseph had received in front of Potiphar, in front of jailer, in front of Pharaoh. So now the prince of Enoch expresses himself. Uh, see, I can't take this risk, but I can do one thing. You see, huh? I'll give you 10 days time to prove yourself with a vegetarian food. So what happened? 10 days, these people ate, uh, you see, vegetarian food. And after 10 days, uh, they did a test. Uh, upon these uh, Jewish people. So what was the result? Verse 15, brother. Huh? And at the end of 10 days, their constances appeared uh, fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. See, compared to all the other children, Daniel and his friends were fairer, it seems, fatter in flesh. You see, not only that one, you see, they fared well in knowledge, wisdom, learning and understanding. That's given in verse 17. So here, you see, then, you see, you can see eating, you see, simple food. You see, they denied, you see, a, a, what you say, a tasty food for the Lord's sake. They subjected themselves for the simple food, but God did not leave them. Just imagine. If 10 days uh, they did not fare well, they were compulsory made to eat uh, the food which is against the law. That would be violating their conscience. But God had heard the prayer and you see, God had blessed Daniel and his friends. Uh, you see, compared to other people, they were fair. 
Therefore, uh, I don't know about in your Nepal, but if you come to India, you see, in India there are Brahmins. You see, you know who are the Brahmins? The very, very most intelligent people. They eat only pure vegetarian. They don't touch non-vegetarian. You see, they are very smart enough that uh, all the accounts department, all the finances in a major uh, big, big companies are handled by these Brahmins. Uh, they are uh, quite intelligent. Uh, you see, when compared to the, you see, what do you say, uh, like the Babylonians, you can compare them to the Muslims today, the Arab peoples, you see. Uh, do you think that uh, they are in a quite well-off jobs uh, in uh, all over the world? You see, we all know very well that uh, they are rich. Some people are rich, but uh, the other majority of the people, they are not in a good position to earn even a good job also. So, we know the intelligence compared to other people. Therefore, dear brethren, you see, when we sacrifice something for the Lord, when we try to live within our means, whatever the Lord has permitted, definitely the Lord's blessings will be there. In that one, if we try to contribute a little bit to the Lord, definitely always God's blessings will be there. You see, so uh, we need to wait till the door is opened. We see in the Bible that Daniel's door was opened. They were promoted in a good position and Daniel was the supreme of all the, you see, wise men in Babylon. We read in the Bible, you see, over all the provinces in Babylon, you see, Daniel was the uh, top uh, three and Daniel was the president uh, of uh, those empires. So, similarly, okay, it might uh, happen to us also, it might happen to the people who are sacrificing for the Lord's sake. So, until such time, God's children need to wait. Okay, next paragraph. Uh, next paragraph, uh, who will read? Amar brother, can you read brother? Okay, brother. A little bit louder, Amar brother. I think your voice is low. <laughs> okay. The injunction mm, owe no man anything but to love one another uh, in, in place that if we have at any time um, advantently and and contrary to this divine wisdom, be, become uh, in independent to other. We should, in every uh, reasonable and honorable way, seek uh, seek to ca cancel that. Indebtedness to pay our uh, debts, if however the debts uh, were incurred in a business way, the credit creditors, knowing at the time that they were running more of less risks and running these risks with a view to making profit and and if the debts were the uh, result of uh, legis he met business fail failure and and had become uh, out yeah, outwit and uh, uh, particularly if they were uh, contracted before the change of nature before become becoming in a new creature it would not be wrong for the mm, no wrong for the new creature to avail himself of what are known as bank bankruptcy Provisions or 
to take advantage of the law which provided that the debt of judgment become null and void after five years, mm -hmm. five years, unless renewed in uh, court or by some uh, individual promise. Very good, brother. Thank you. So the injection, oh, no man anything but to love one another, implies that if uh, we have any time inadvertently and contrary to divine wisdom become indebted to others, we should in every reasonable, honorable way seek to cancel the indebtedness to pay our debt. What does it mean? You see, dear brethren, it means that uh, if we have taken any loan, you see, you see, if we have taken any loan, you see, that is against the Bible, against the scripture, okay, only in times of critical times, there, there was no option, we had to take loan, we have taken loan, it is really our duty to clear those loans, as much as possible, we need to try to clear our loans, you see, we need to curtail our expenses, so that uh, we always try to clear our loans. But even while taking loans, we should be very cautious not to go to people where, who charge, you see, very high interest rate, you see, and uh, try to borrow the loans. We should try to, first of all, not borrow it, but in times of critical times, we should need to take loans from the reasonable persons, reasonable, what do you say, banks or uh, uh, things which lend loan at a uh, lower interest rate. And it is our primary duty to clear those loans. At any cost, we should try to clear it. You see, we can't uh, you see, keep it like that uh, and uh, make uh, interest upon interest uh, to grow such a way that ultimately our uh, interest itself will become more than our principal amount. So, God's children should be very careful to clear whatever loans they have in a very reasonable way. Next, if our... But this is, I am speaking about the personal law. You see, uh, the loans, what we have taken uh, for our uh, various activities. It's not a business type loan. But there is other loan, which uh, generally the people uh, take for a business way. But if we, you see, the consecrated people have taken loan of any kind in a business way, you see, you should be very careful in dealing those matters. Because usually the loan which they give for a, a business, it is upon a condition. You see, the rate of interest will be high when compared to the other loans and all. The, because the business, uh, they usually do, you see, uh, uh, sales uh, and purchases where they can earn a lot of profit. So, it will be Profit, uh, you see, motivated uh, loans. So, whoever gives a business loan, they are completely aware of the risk uh, that is uh, abiding while lending the loan. So, during the time of business, if you have taken the loan and if you are not able to repay it, because business, uh, uh, we can't say anything. It can be either way. It can create profit, it can create loss also. It depends upon the market. See, market is completely vulnerable. You see, we can't trust the market. It might fluctuate whenever it wants. You see, it might increase, it might decrease. We might get loss, or we may get profit also. So that is completely not in our control. But in such a case, if we have taken any business loan and we are not able to pay back our loans, if we have failed to pay back our loans, you see, then that time, you see, we should be very careful. Because sometimes what has happened that uh, uh, the, the, as new creature, they would have fallen into these types of loans. And the entire consecrated life so completely goes off just clearing these loans. Dear brethren, you see, at that time, what is the option before the new creature? If you see, but Russell gives a beautiful example, you see, and that example, in the court of law, there is a provision that is called as bankruptcy. You see, in the Companies Act of India, not Nepal, 
But here in Companies Act of India, we have a provision of bankruptcy. That means if a company is a, a startup company, it started, you see, with the initial capital investment of loan and uh, uh, shares or etc. etc. You see, they are given an opportunity of five years, you see, to pick up uh, that company and make profit at least uh, for a period of five years. But even after five years, uh, if they don't make profit, if they don't make, if they don't start making profit, uh, you see, that company is eligible for shutdown. You see, and you know what is the benefit of that eligible of uh, shutdown? Whatever uh, you see, uh, loans they have taken, you see, those loans, uh, you see, will be completely waived off. You see, and that company will be declared bankruptcy. Bankruptcy means what? You see, whatever you have taken is completely net off. You see, it's completely waved off. No need to pay anything. So you are not able to survive it. You are not able to sustain the business. So that business is shut down. You see, that is there in the court of law. You see, but uh, if that option is there, they have run in the world. But the Russell gives the best advice, whatever benefit is there in the government, better utilize it if that loan is for a business purpose. You see, because if you don't utilize those opportunities which are given by the government, you see, we will be, you see, utter foolish in taking decisions of completely taking risk of clearing those loans. You see, so now uh, some people might wonder, Brother, is it reasonable that uh, we take the loan, we are not able to pay and uh, we just go for bankruptcy? Is it, uh, uh, what do you say, is it just, is it the current thing that we are doing? Uh, aren't we injustice? If you say, no. Because those provisions are made by the government. If government has made the provision for the benefit of the people, there is nothing wrong for the people to utilize it. Remember what is a government? The government is a democracy. It is for the people, of the people and by, by, by the people. So the constitution, the rules, everything, it is for the benefit of the people at any point of time. If we can use these things for the benefit as a new creature, we may serve the Lord better. It is always reasonable good. Dear brethren, you see, here in India, you see, one brother uh, had to happen in such a case. Uh, you see, so he fell into loan. You see, he fell into debt. He was not able to clear it. But there was an advantage uh, in the uh, court of law, uh, you see, where uh, uh, these things were calculated, uh, you see. And uh, uh, they ended up uh, calculating that uh, if the brother keeps on paying his loan, Ultimately, what will happen is that uh, he'll be paying extra, much more extra than what uh, he was supposed to be paid. Then uh, he let the company go, he let the assets uh, go to the bank. Uh, the, the complete uh, things was taken over by the bank. Uh, you see, the bank declared bankruptcy that is not payable and is completely waived off him. So that advantage was taken by a brother. There's nothing wrong in that one because the bank, if they are given the loan, they know the risk of the, you see, the person who's taking the loan, you see. So, uh, so as the bank knows all these things, if we have this provision of getting the advantage, it is always better to use that advantage. And uh, uh, there's nothing wrong in utilizing those things. What did Jesus say in the Bible? A person comes and asks the master, Master, uh, is it correct to pay the tax? What did Jesus reply? Jesus replied saying, show me the coin. So on the coin, the inscription was there about uh, Caesar. So Jesus asked, uh, whose uh, imprint is it? It's a Caesar's. So pay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. That means whatever is reasonable, you see, to be paid to the concerned department, it is our duty to pay it off. So there is nothing wrong in utilizing these benefits. You remember Apostle Paul? You see, Apostle Paul was a Roman citizen. He was Jew. 
but he was a Roman citizen. Once what happened was that Apostle Paul, you see, was beaten several years, several times. Sir. He was beaten several times by so many people. But once, uh, you see, a Roman soldier began to beat uh, Apostle Paul. He immediately stood for that one and told, you see, I am a Roman citizen, you are beating me. I am going to appeal this one before Caesar in Rome. You see, and uh, you see, uh, we might wonder, why brother, why Apostle Paul asked this question? Is it uh, correct to uh, oppose the persecutions? Uh, God's children should uh, silently bore all these persecutions, no? But uh, there, if you see in the scriptures, uh, you see, Apostle Paul opposed it. Uh, let me show you the scripture one minute. It comes in the books of Apostle. Uh, Can anybody search the scripture in the book of Apostles? I think it's in the book of Acts, brother. Oh, uh, Acts only. Acts of the Apostles. Yes. Please, Kindly, please can you search uh, which portion? Mm. Ah, Romans, sorry, Acts of the Apostles, 22nd chapter, verse, uh, uh, verse 25, verse, from verse 25. Mm. Can and you? as and as they bound him with thongs, Paul said unto the uh, centrium that stood by, "It is lawful for you to scourge a man that is a Roman and uncondemned." You see, ah, continue, says, continue, brother. Ah. When the centrion heard that, he went and told the chief captain saying, Take heed what thou doest, for this man is a Roman. Hmm. Then the chief captain came and said unto him, Tell me, art thou a Roman? He said, Yeah. And the chief captain answered, With a great sum obtain I this freedom. And Paul said, But I was free born. 29 okay. also, brother. Okay, so there you see Apostle Paul appealed that how you are beating a Roman citizen. But if you read 2 Corinthians, brother, please, 2 Corinthians 11 chapter, Ashish, brother, you are there? Can you read 2 Corinthians 11 chapter, uh, verse 24, brother? Okay, brother. Hmm. 2 Corinthians 11.24 Of the Jews, five times received I, forty stripes, save one. Continue. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeying often, in perils of waters, in perils of rovers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, hmm. in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. You see? See, Apostle Paul was ready to take all the beatings. He has taken several times, but this time he opposed it. Why? 
because he was a Roman citizen and he knew very well that if he uses the power of a Roman citizen, he can go to Rome. You see, that was the advantage which actually Apostle Paul was taking. He wanted to go to Rome and witness to Caesar. You see, that is the way he opened. You see, he was waiting for the opportunity. But when God opened the opportunity, he utilized it. Why I am giving this example, dear brethren? See, there are certain things in the law. What I am saying, not the law of the Bible, the government laws. So if those things are benefiting for us, you see, as God's children, we need to utilize it. There is nothing wrong in utilizing it. What did Jesus say? Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You see, so the, at that moment, if you have this privilege, so why don't we use it? Uh, if it's bringing, uh, you see, more uh, a door of opportunities to do the Lord's work, we better use it. Uh, Apostle Paul used it. He went and stood before, uh, you see, uh, Roman governor. You see, after this one, uh, he went and preached uh, before Agriapa. You see, the Roman, the, the way to Rome journey, the ship was wrecked. You see, yet uh, all the people were saved. Apostle Paul already prophesied all these things that is going to happen. So, so many Roman people, through the journey of Apostle Paul, were coming to the truth. So, similarly, by using of this law, it was advantageous for the Lord. So similarly, if we have so much of loss in our government, which is actually benefiting for us, there is nothing wrong in utilizing. So even as God's children, if we, if we have the privilege of utilizing the bankruptcy law, it is always better to go for it. Because that is a safer side. You see, somehow we can... You see, uh, what do you say? Somehow we can move away from the mistakes which are committed unknowingly. Okay. But uh, the Russell says, uh, you see, if there is no such law, if there is no such provision in the government uh, where uh, bankruptcy can be declared, you see, and if you, if you must, uh, you see, clear it uh, by the court or any other law, you see, it's better that we try to clear it as much as possible. Even at that time also, we need to be very careful how we handle it. You see, instead of paying the interest, we better uh, negotiate to try to as much as uh, clear our principal amount than paying uh, unnecessary interest and uh, simply making ourselves more burden. So here, you see, some of the laws uh, which are in the world for our benefit, if you are using it, there is nothing wrong, dear brethren. Because all the laws in the world are copied from the Bible only. And some things are left over for our benefit. So it's better that we utilize it. See, even Jesus mentions one thing. You see, Jesus said, no, if somebody compels you to go for a mile, go with him for two miles. Jesus mentions in the gospel. So what does that mean? As Roman citizen, the Romans had the power over the Jews. They could compel a Jew you see, and tell them to carry their luggage minimum for one mile. As a Roman citizen, they could compel the Jewish people to walk with them, carry their luggage, you see, as a beast of burden for at least one mile. But beyond one mile, it was not necessary that uh, Jewish people should be under Roman's, uh, you see, oppression. They could tell, no, my, my, uh, your rule says that I should go only for a mile, so I can drop it there and go. But Jesus said, you go beyond that one. So, there again, the rules are mentioned. Uh, you see, about the Romans, uh, rules are mentioned in the Gospels. Uh. So, Apostle Paul took this advantage, you see. And we read in the Bible that uh, Apostle Peter and Apostle John also took the advantage. You know, John was actually a relative of the high priest. Uh. His father knew the high priest. Uh. Hence, when Jesus' trial was happening, you see, John went into the Sinatrian Hall. We also read in the Bible that uh, Peter also along with John went into the Sinatrian Hall. So they used that advantage, you see, of their influence. So similarly, if we have such influence where we can be using it to serve the Lord better, dear brethren, it is always better that we use it. Another example of somebody using their influence, you see, in the Bible is that we read about the book of Esther. You see, Haman had made a degree that all the Jewish people has to be killed on a particular date, you see. And Mordecai, the uncle of Esther, he requests Esther to go before king and request life of all the Jewish people. 
But uh, yes, sir, uh, she was very hesitant to go before the king uh, because it was forbidden to go before the king until the king himself calls the queen. So it was been almost months together that uh, Esther was remembered before the uh, king and it was very difficult position for Esther to go. But uh, Mordecai requested to use her influence. Uh, you see, and that time, you see, they all prayed. Uh, you see, and uh, she used their influence and it worked out. Uh, it worked out for the benefit of the Jewish people. Their brethren. So, as God's children, you see, if we have those advantages, it's better that we use it. Even I gave you the example of Joseph, no? You know, when uh, all the brethren of Joseph uh, returned to Egypt, uh, they all recognized that Joseph was, uh, uh, you see, next to Pharaoh. You see, uh, you know what happened? Huh? The Pharaoh asked Joseph, uh, please give the best of the land uh, to all your brethren. Uh, let them, uh, you see, stay happily in uh, Egypt. Uh, you know, which land did Joseph choose? Anybody? Any guess? Anybody can answer this one? Anybody can try to answer? Which was the land that was selected by Joseph for the brethren? Did they select a land in Egypt? Or where did they select? Anybody? Gopal brother, Ashish brother? Any idea? You are there, brethren, Joel brother, or uh, we are a Romy sister. Any guesses? I think it's easy in Egypt, brother. Okay, so uh, uh, tell me, brother, Joel brother. Uh, no idea, brother. Okay, so uh, they did not select a land in Egypt. You know, they selected a land outside Egypt. Why? Because Egyptians were not shepherds. You see, but uh, Jewish people were shepherds. The only property they had was, uh, you see, sheep and uh, cattle. And if they come and settle inside Egypt, they have to live as per the customs of Egypt. That will be abomination, you see, for the Egyptians. What will happen? Unnecessary friction will happen. So Joseph was very wise enough. He used his influence, you know, which is the land that they got for his family. They got the land of Goshen, which was actually outside the primary land of Egypt. You can read Genesis 46. Uh, verse uh, 33 and 34. Uh. And it shall come to pass when Pharaoh shall call you and shall say, What is your occupation? Mm. That ye shall say, Thy servant's trade hath been about cattle from our youth even until now both we and also our fathers, that ye may dwell in the land of Gosen, for every shepherd is an abomination unto the Egyptian. You see, every shepherd is abomination. So you are told already, his brother, so behave like this only, don't tell anything else. So when they are taken before the Pharaoh, Pharaoh asked, what is your occupation? The brother's reply that we are all shepherds. We are all come to not settle in Egypt, only to come in, you see, sojourn because only of famine. Once the famine is over, we will, uh, you see, uh, move. Then what happened? Mm, uh, read Genesis 47. Mm, verse uh, 47, verse 4, 5 and 6. Verse 5 and 6 you read with huh? And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, hmm. Thy fathers and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. Hmm. In the best of the land make thy father and brethren to dwell. Hmm. In the land of Goshen hmm. let them dwell. Hmm. And if, they, if thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. You see? So which was the land? Uh, 
Ferragero. You see, Ferragero, exactly the land of Goshen. Because Joseph had already requested, which land you want? Give them the best of the land. You see, so even imagine if somebody else were there in the position, they would have asked, oh, give me the land which is next to the palace. We can live very securely, safely. But Joseph did not, uh, you see, ask those things. Even though it was outside, uh, you see, Egypt, a uh, land of Goshen, you see, that was suitable for, uh, you see, shepherding. And not only that one, as it was in the border of Egypt, uh, you see, uh, coming to Egypt, if something happens, uh, you see, easily the, uh, the Israelite people can move out of, uh, you see, Egypt. That was actually the original plan. You see, therefore, they were then, See, Joseph used his influence, isn't it? So here, Brother Russell suggests, if you have such a provisions in your government, you see, it is better that you utilize it. But if you are not able to utilize, if you don't have any provisions among your society, it is better that we clear all our loan. You see, therefore, it says, you see, provide things honorable in the sight of all men. Oh, no man anything except love. So, as new creatures, we should never fall into taking the habit of loan. Okay? So, let me ask you one question. Is there any such law in Nepal? Any such provision of bankruptcy is there in Nepal? Any idea? Any brother? No idea. Gopal brother, I think you are studying accounts. Any idea in your accounts book is there? Ashish brother, tell me. Uh, we don't have such a bankruptcy in business, but might be in some small cooperatives. Like if, if small cooperatives got bankrupted and the loan, uh, the debtors who took loan from that cooperatives, uh, they will be freed. Uh, but Brother Gopal, I think he knows more about uh, this. There is okay. any such laws. Okay, Gopal, brother, any idea? Uh, uh, I think it's in for big business only, brother. Correct, exactly. It's for only good, good, big, big businesses. You see, here in India, lot of advantage are misused you see, by big, big companies. You see, you know about big, big companies, uh, for what you say, uh, uh, what's his name? Anil Ambani, Mukesh Sambani's brother. He completely got bankrupted. He's completely lost, lost all of his assets. You see, so he used that privilege. Even, uh, you see, what is his name? Uh, Vijay Malia. You see, his uh, aircraft, uh, Kingfisher Airlines, that got, uh, got bankruptcy. You see, they used those privileges. You see, yet uh, so much of loan is there. But they could not completely weigh off the entire loan. But certain bit of that uh, provisions of the loan was, you see, waived off by the government. Sir. You see, so those privileges are there. So as Brother Gopal said, uh, you see, uh, these laws, first of all, are known by uh, well-educated people know in and out of the law, you see, and uh, who are very influential, who are very good businesses, uh, because those people have those influences and uh, they can approach it uh, from the law. But as uh, uh, Brother Nasu told, it's very difficult for a small scale business or very, very small units to uh, go for these things, uh, because uh, the law should be, you see, it's equal for everybody, but uh, it should be more approachable for the people. Good. So, you, you know of any example in your country, brother, Gopal brother? Any company has taken such steps? No idea, brother. No idea. Okay, good. Okay, then. So, we'll stop our study here today. So, we'll continue next week. Uh, anybody, any comments, any suggestions, any questions, any thoughts on this uh, paragraph? Anybody? Munna sister or Joel brother, Romi sister. Excuse me, brother Raju. Ah, tell me. Ah, uh, तो like पनी ये तो sentence बुझने गारो भागो ये paragraph भर में जुना जाम ले रहे हो। तो paragraph भर में तो पहले कुने sentence अथवा कुने word बुझने गार सो बनी सोच मोला ही। आह तो पहले बत्तीसरी नहीं सीखने पड़ जाएगी। 
सेंटेन्स वर्ड कुनै वर्ड है बुझ्नु भएको छैन भने पनि त्यस्तो कुनै छ ब्रदर जोएल केही छ त्यस्तो छैन दाजु इनहरुमा छ जी ठीक छ उहाँले ब्रदर आजले भन्नु भएको एक्सप्लेनेसन त बुझ्नु भयो कि तर अब यहाँ कुनै त्यस्तो सेंटेन्स अथवा कुनै वर्ड त्यस्तो नबुझ्नु भएको छ भने पनि सोध्दा हुन्छ कि छ जोएल ठीक लगे ओवरअल में सब सुने बड़ी हाईलाइट हमी काम जिसमें चाह हमें देखता देखते राम भैर है तर अब तेस में हमी होने भाथी नहीं एटा सेंटेन्स वहाँ अभी कस्तो हाईलाइटेड भाग कि प्रभु ने मैं मन नलाग्दा नलाग्द मैं अब पैला को अर्गनाइजेशन छोड़े न अस में प्रभु ने नहीं कस्त कि लिया भाई मैं आज तक रियलाइज भागेस कर अब लोन को विषय में तो विगत को समय में हमें सुनी रख झन बड़ी क्लियरिटी आँद योर सब में अर्क अगे हजार भाग सान सो फाइनेंस लघुवित्तर पैल्हे इंसुरेन्स कर लोन को अर्टेन पर्सेंट काटे हो इफ इनकेस के भिना करने अपलक रिसेंटली हमें था तब को एग्री प्लस हमें अनुभव भग हिसाब से सब को लगी तर मैं विशेष हाईलाइट भाग प्रभु ने ना अमर मैं ब्याज उठा एक लाख जी पचास हजार जी तो पैल्हे प्रिमिम राख क्या उसे अब अलग यह सूर्य दर्शन को घटना भाषा तब था पाने सूर्य दर्शन सूर्य दर्शन टाँट पलटिया एक हिसाब से अब तेज को ओनर सब पकड़ पड़े जी लोन लो बैंक भाषा जो लगता है कि मैं क्या कंपनी नहीं बैंक भो सूर्य दर्शन को केस ये भाषा कि सूर्य दर्शन बैंक को लघुवित्त बैंक भाषा क्या मैं सुनेंकनी विद्युत प्राधिकरण ठूल कंपनी विद्युत प्राधिकरण को पैसे दी रहे बैंक <laughs> Uh, good anyway. good there is one more provision sister i think uh, that was the point she was trying to mention most probably i think so that if you uh, if there are certain bit of insurances for the loan in india we have that provision if you are taking the home loan you can do insurance for your home loan like for example if you are mm. not able to pay okay so and if there is a natural disaster if your building falls off so that insurance company will pay the loan for you on on behalf of you for the company mm. But, so that's the advantage so that was not there earlier so that advantage if you have you can utilize it there's one more example like i can say like for example you see i, I come uh, if i come to nepal 
by airways i try to do insurance that's just 50 rupees extra but by mm. doing 50 rupees extra all my things are taken care of like for example if i lose my baggage the company is entirely responsible until i get the baggage or else they'll completely replace the things which are there in my baggage and uh, if something happens to me if i if i feel ill entire hospitalization everything is taken care by the insurance company so that benefit see that benefit if you have so you can utilize it. so these are the things and one more example i'll give you like for example if you if you take a loan at, at, at a higher rate of interest and uh, uh, later on if you're not able to pay those loans okay you can you can put some legal questions like for example uh, if that company was lent you the amount is it legally authorized under the government if it is legally authorized then what is the legitimate percentage of interest they are supposed to charge are they charging beyond this one then you can go to the consumer court avail that benefit and cut short your interest so those are those are also advantage because some people they blind the people saying oh we have we have, our uh, we are legally entitled to charge 20% interest or 5% interest 10% interest per month so that might be fake if that is fake if you have that provision in the government where you can legally go to the consumer court to get your interest reduced those advantages also can be attained okay so okay. anybody anything else sister muna kai cha haru maile uha le bhannu bhako sin experience bhanda pani kitab ko ke jun hamro aaj tapai haru le kitab pani her rakhnu bhaycha haina volume 6 volume 6 ma aaja heri ko paragraph ma jasto kunai nabujhe ko sin tin sa dawa nabujhnu bhako word kai cha bhanne cha sodnu bhanne avakash ma kai cha sister muna so aile ta testo kei pani chaina ra pani ek patak ramro sang revise garera kei bujhena bhanne sochchu ni hajur le tapai le english pani herne bani basalnu pare ke tapai le hai english hai bujhnu pare ke pahila ta eta brother gopal kei cha hm testo kei chaina daaju hajur chaina okay brother raju we are quite clear Okay, so everybody are able to follow this uh, English uh, uh, sentence explanations. Is it comfortable? Because English sentence were very, what do you say, lengthy. So as you read, I don't think you will be able to understand. But uh, giving such examples, I hope you are comfortable to understand it. If you understand the concept, that is important. That's sufficient. Uh, are are all okay? Joel brother, uh, Romy sister, Amar brother, Munna sister. uh yes brother it's uh actually very hard to uh, understand the sentences but then uh, also we have been reading the nepali ones and i think we have to focus on more reading the english sentences sentences properly then understand the concept i think Okay, good sister. Always try to understand the concept in the paragraph because each and every sentence, if you need to understand, it's very difficult. So certain bit of things which you are not able to understand, better just skip it off and go to the things which you understand the concept. So that is sufficient. See, that's the reason I gave you a lot of examples from the Bible and from the world, so that that concept should be there in our mind. Because if, when that situation comes in our life, how do we tackle? Correct now? Yes, brother. Okay, Amar brother. yes brother we are understanding um, okay good need meet good no problem it will take some time joel brother what's your uh, opinion what's your experience oh uh, trying to understand brother good good but uh, hope is you this studies are useful yes brother easy to understand when you explain good good okay munna sitar i think munna sitar and gopal are quite comfortable ashish also quite comfortable so not a issue okay then okay. Ah, tell tell munna sitar yes brother it is okay good 